Welcome to our class. I would like to go over some fundamental concepts needed in the web development field. To begin, you need to have a system in place for working with your files. And when you're learning, you need to have a system in place where you can put the files that you are learning to develop. I am looking at a portion of the My Documents in Windows. If you're using another platform, you will have a file manager that has a similar capabilities. You will, you should create a name for the course. So here I have a folder that would have the course name. In that folder, I would create other folders in order to organize the learning material and doing it by either chapters or by weeks or whatever makes sense to you. But you need to be able to have a place to put your files so that you can learn. Now, in my Chapter 2 folder, I have several other folders. This would be the folder where I would organize my assignments. This might be the folder where I have the demo files from the chapter. This might be a folder where I have practice files. So learning how to work with files and folders is very important because a website consists of many folders and many files. You also need to be able to use an HTML editor. You can use Notepad or another plain text editor, but there are serious limitations. I would like to introduce to you Adobe Brackets. If I launch Brackets from my taskbar, it will automatically open to the Getting Started page. This is the Getting Started page, which tells you a little bit more about Brackets. Notice it opens to a file, index.html. So this is my working file right here. If I put my cursor toward that file name, I see an X where I can close it. It opened that file from the Getting Started folder somewhere on my hard drive when I install Brackets. It has two other files. It also has the CSS file and the index.html, which we are looking at. Index.html is the most commonly used name for the home page of a website or for the starting page in any folder. The web server will automatically load that as the home page. At the left hand corner of my editor, I have some tools. This lightning bolt is live preview. So when I click on that, it will open the browser. I am looking at the getting started page in Chrome and I can scroll down and I can read a little bit more information. So notice it loads it in Chrome. And if you notice the address, this is what's called the local host. So it's using the local web server to load this file. Generally, what I do when I'm testing files is I launch it with Live Preview once, and then I just minimize it, and then I go to the taskbar and launch the browser again, and I refresh the page in order to see the changes. Down to the left-hand corner again. To the right of the Live Preview is the Extension Manager. These are the extensions that I have installed. One is Beautify, one is Emmet. I will show you how to use them. Now let's take a look at this code. Here's my opening HTML tag. And notice when I click on it, it highlights in green. If I scroll down, it will highlight the ending tag. And these are comments. Here again, this file comes with brackets. If I click on the head section, it matches the closing tag. So these are my tag delimiters, the opening tag and the closing tag. You will notice that some tags are one-sided. They don't contain any content, they just do something. So you will always be starting out with some default, you will always be starting out with some default tags that tell the browser some needed information. For example, this is for mobile devices. This is for the character encoding. Here's our title of the website, getting started with brackets. Notice it is a two-sided tag. Here is the link tag for the style sheet. 
you will begin learning these tags as we work through the course. Notice the indentation. You don't have to indent. However, you need to use a logical, consistent style of coding your HTML so that it's easy to work with. Here we have the, the opening and closing tag on two lines because it contains a lot of content inside. Here we have the opening and closing tag on one line because there's not a lot of content. The same thing here with the H1 element, that's my heading level 1. It fits nicely across. However, when I go to my paragraph, the opening and closing, we have a lot of content, so we stack the opening and closing underneath it. These are HTML comments and what they are used to give you more information about what your document is doing. So you want to develop a consistent, easy to understand style with which you write your code. Now I am going to close this file and I will show you how to start working with a new HTML file. So the first thing you will do when you start creating a new file is go to the File tab and choose New. Now notice it's untitled. It says two because I already opened one. Before you start coding anything, you want to save this. So File, Save As, and I will navigate to where I will put this file. I'm going to Documents, the name of my course. I will go to Chapter 2, and I will go to Practice. And you can call this whatever you want. You can call this index.html. You can call it test.html. But you need to type in the HTML extension so the browser knows that. And now I will save it. The beauty of saving it first is that when you start typing HTML elements, it automatically knows what you're typing. And this is called code hinting. It helps you to actually write the code. Notice it just put in the opening and closing tag for me. Another nice feature is one of these very nice extensions called Emmet. Notice I have a whole toolbar up here for Emmet, and there are keyboard commands that help you to put in your HTML elements. It is advisable to code mostly everything in by hand because that is how you learn. But once you become more experienced, you will see how the editor will help you to write the code. I am going to use Emmet to help me code in my basic tags. And what I have done, I have coded in an exclamation point, and now if I hit my tab key, it will automatically put my basic tags in for me. This is one reason you want to install the Emmet plugin, because otherwise you need to code this by hand every time. It's not that hard, but this is a little bit easier. This is what you need to have to start an HTML document. I would also like to point out on the left hand side that we're still looking at the getting started folder. So you can go into your own folder and therefore it makes it a little bit easier. And notice when I open practice there's test. So now I will double click and there's test. This is the doc type. It's the document type definition. It's telling the browser that this is an HTML5 document, meaning it will interpret the code based on the HTML5 standards. It doesn't have the number 5 after it. This is your opening and closing HTML tag. The HTML tag contains an attribute, the lang attribute. This is language. Language equals en for English. This attribute is for screen readers. People who are visually impaired use a screen reader to interpret the code and talk to them. That is telling them that to speak in the English language. This is not telling the browser to use in English characters. HTML document contains two sections, the head section and the body section. And I cannot overemphasize this anymore. All of your HTML content goes inside the body. Now supposing I had a header element and inside that header element I had an h1 element. And if you want to move things around to make them a little bit easier to see, you can. There's the head section, there's the body section. All of my content goes in here. Even though this has the word header in it, it does not belong in the head section. Even though this is a heading level one element, it does not belong in the head section. It belongs in the body section. It is content. So many students confuse that. This is where all of your web page images, text, 
HTML layout belongs. What goes in the head section is processing information to the browser. Now the title goes there. The title is part of the browser. It is not part of the web page. So if I click my live preview and launch this, there's my heading level one. Notice in my tab up here, my test page, this is where the title shows up. Everything that you want inside browser goes in the body tag. If I right click and go to view page source, I can see the source code. Now notice the source code puts in all this bracket stuff, which I don't like. The reason it's doing that is because it's running it from local host. Let's take a look at a different way of doing this. And I'm going to go to chapter two and I'm going to right click and open as a brackets project. And now it's opened a little differently. We still see the folder up here and we see the other folders and the file. And this is the main reason you want to use an editor because you can see all your folders and files and you can write the code more easily. You can't do that with text editor. So rather than launching the test page from the live preview, if I were to launch it right from the file manager, notice it's launching it as a local file from the file manager. And now if I right click and look at view page source, I do not see all those brackets attributes. So I just want to point that out. The live preview is wonderful for testing. However, when you use live preview, it does work with what is called the local web host. And because it's doing that, when you look at the source code, you're going to see all these attributes in there. This is something that brackets is just putting in there. What is in your code is what's right here, what you type. All right, you do not need those brackets attributes to run your web page on the web server.